Horton. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, I too rise to speak on the humanitarian crisis occurring in Iraq in response to the Prime Minister and uh, opposition leader's statement in the main chamber. Uh, could, could I begin by acknowledging uh, the sacrifices in particular of um, the journalists uh, who have gone off to provide information to the world uh, uh, yet have lost their lives in this, in this um, horrible conflict. Stephen Sotloff, James Foley and Bassem Reyes and many others, and many others I'm sure that could be named. Uh, obviously we work in words uh, as politicians, words and beliefs, but we tend to come home okay. Uh, when they go off to provide information to the, to the world, they put themselves in harm's way. So I do acknowledge uh, their particular sacrifice and offer my condolences. Uh, little as it is to, to their families. Um, obviously, uh, I have been contacted by many people in my electorate about this unfolding situation in the Middle East. Uh, I've got a significant Muslim population and many of them have raised concerns uh, about uh, the process. Uh, also, the other week uh, there was a, a rally in um, Brisbane uh, by the, the Kurdish community seeking further support um, and then they, they actually provided me with a petition. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read a, a few of the people who, who uh, wrote to me direct from my electorate. There were many other people from outside my electorate, obviously, uh, but this is what their, their letter says. Um, I urge the Australian government to send further humanitarian aids and military assistance to Kurdistan. I also ask the Australian government to recognise the ISIS barbar barbarism on the people of Kurdistan, including the Yazidi, the Christian and Shabak religious minorities as acts of war, crime and genocide. I appreciate your efforts and assistance in advance. And I, I, I have taken, uh, the group also wrote to the Prime Minister and to the Foreign Minister, and I think also to um, Tenya Plibersek, who's the shadow uh, spokesperson on this area. And I, I personally delivered that, that um, correspondence to the uh, Foreign Minister's office. And I, I know that she has been working uh, hard to make sure that the concerns of the Kurdish community and other other minorities that are being targeted are uh, being listened to. So I, I say that to um, Juan from Sunnybank Hills, to uh, Karen from Yoronga, and Mady from Yoronga, and Shadia from Acacia Ridge, uh, Cardo from Acacia Ridge, Sevier from Acacia Ridge, Sakala from Runcorn, Zana from Runcorn, and Mohammed from Sunnybank Hills, to name just a few of the people that have written to me that I, I have passed on your concerns. Uh, obviously, the newspapers and <coughs> newspapers and, and our television screens have been filled regularly too often with the atrocities that are taking place uh, in, in Iraq uh, and obviously also in, in Syria, uh, a country that surely, uh, in terms of taking and accepting refugees, is doing more than almost any other nation at the moment in terms of accommodating displaced people. Maybe Lebanon next door might be... Uh, uh, doing, uh, doing it tough as well. So this extremist, uh, extremist armed group is committing mass atrocities against ethnic minorities in northern Iraq. We understand that. Sadly, we know that because they are adept at placing uh, information about this on social media. Um, and as the Iraqi security force, forces and the Kurdish Peshmerga, uh, Peshmerga fighters confront the, these uh, terrorists, the civilians remain at risk of further mass atrocities and crimes. Um, the security situation in Iraq has dramatically deteriorated, particularly in the Nineveh province and the Kurdish uh, semi-autonomous region, an area that actually used to embrace people that were, were uh, different and not necessarily Kurds, even though the Kurds have uh, hundreds and hundreds of years of history of being uh, discriminated against, they actually have been this incredibly generous people. Uh, uh, and certainly in my community they've always been very uh, engaged and supportive. And as a result of these ongoing attacks by the terrorists, uh, these barbaric terrorists, uh, who operate on both sides of the Iraq-Syria border uh, and declared uh, a, a caliphate spanning both countries, uh, uh, something that cannot be allowed to continue because of the, the terror that is being wreaked on, on civilians. The, they've they and several associated armed groups have engaged in widespread fighting with the Iraqi security forces and they're causing civilian casualties and widespread civilian displacement. 
The United Nations Assistance Mission <coughs> for Iraq reported that more than uh, 1,000 civilians were killed during July alone, in, uh, excluding deaths in Embar province, and that nearly uh, over 5,000 civilians were, were killed in the first six months of this year. Labor's support for the government on the situation in Iraq is underpinned by three key principles. One, we need to respond effectively to the humanitarian crisis in Iraq to prevent genocide and to relieve suffering. Two, to promote a unity government in Iraq, which hopefully is only days away, a government that is inclusive and can achieve national cohesion, something that did not flow from the disastrous war uh, from, near, from over a decade ago. We need a government that will reject sectarianism and the alienation of minorities, enabling effective security uh, and peace and harmony and control over Iraqi territory. <coughs> Obviously, the, the uh, uh, world community must not act in a way that would leave Iraq in a worse position and in a situation where things could deteriorate. And third, the third key principle is that we must deny the motivation and opportunity for any Australians uh, to go and um, join these foreign fighters. As the opposition leader said early in the week, opposition leader Shorten said, every action uh, of these terrorists is a betrayal of the millions of good people of good conscience who follow the same faith. Sadly, uh, that, that's why I'm, I'm not going to use the term that is regularly used to describe these terrorists because I do not think that those are words that should be put together because they would be betraying the tenets of their religion because of the horrific uh, crimes that they're, they're um, uh, uh, doing at the moment on people. These, um, I, I think from my dealings and my readings, uh, it would be much more accurate to say that the these terrorists do not represent the Islamic faith in any way. Uh, I cannot say that enough. Uh, as a member of the international uh, community, Australia strives to uphold the notion of the responsibility to protect. Uh, I think the member for Sydney uh, has detailed this in some speeches, and I, I think Gareth Evans uh, recently also in the Australian newspaper. So this the handling of this responsibility is not an easy task. Um, we do have to look at our own geography uh, first, obviously, that's, that's what uh, uh, good community members do. Um, but there comes a time, as we've shown over the, the last 100 years, where we do step up in Australia. And maybe if social media had been uh, as prevalent uh, back in the 90s when, you know, when Somalia and Bosnia and Rwanda and Kosovo and, and those atrocities happened, maybe we would have been even quicker to go and do our bit in terms of making sure uh, we protected as many people as possible when people are being attacked for their religion or culture or, or faith or, uh, or um, ethnicity. Uh, disagreement continues today about the right level of intervention. Uh, I think we can learn from the mistakes made in this parliament uh, in the first Iraqi war, uh, uh, but we need to uh, be very careful, obviously, and, and make sure that we have everybody on side. Uh, we, we don't, if people are going to talk about Team Australia, they need to be, be clear that they're including all Australians, that we are not just being um, someone that answers solely to whatever the United States says. The Australia was pivotal in creating the United Nations and I think we should always take our lead from the United Nations, not on a, on a two or three uh, uh, member state uh, initiative. We should always work with the United Nations. That when, that's when we can do the most good for the most number of people. Um, so I'm glad that we're able to stand up and express our views in, in this uh, democratic chamber uh, about where, where, whether we should go and how we should go. And I'm particularly proud of the, the dedicated and professional men and women of our Australian Defence Force. Uh, I will mention the, the Royal Australian Air Force because they'll be doing most of the heavy lifting, both metaphorically and literally. Uh, and I know that, that there'll be challenges for those uh, service personnel and their families. Uh, I had a, a cousin recently came back from the Middle East area of operations uh, from the MEO and, and it certainly uh, can be challenging and I know in the next few weeks it'll be particularly so. So it, it saddens me to say that sometimes it is necessary for the international community to take such strong steps but aid won't do it when people are going to ignore the rules of war and international humanitarian law and execute people 
both that are prisoners and civilians. We need to do more. We need to take stronger steps. And I'm very confident of the skill and bravery of our Australian defence personnel, and I support their efforts in Iraq in assisting the international humanitarian effort to prevent genocide against these beleaguered minorities in northern Iraq.